Here's a brief introduction and history of the DV format and in particular mini DV tape cassettes. So the DV format was used quite widely back in the 90s. Mini DV is actually the smallest of three different cassette sizes for, for DV. So um, they are all identical in terms of the, uh, the structure of the, the actual tape and the electronics, etc. But um, the larger ones probably had longer capacity and were used for larger cameras. So the standard mini DV tape holds 60 minutes of video in SP mode or 90 minutes in LP. So just a, a bit of history. In the 80s, camcorders um, basically around the world adopted this format called VHS-C, which, which was the, the mainstream format for camcorders. So VHS is obviously analog and C stands for compact. So you, you get a slightly uh, larger cassette than this um, that recorded in analog. The advantage of VHS-C was most houses around the world had a VHS, VCR or VCP um, already. So you could pop the tape into one of those players and you know show your friends or families the videos that you've recorded. Now, then came the 90s and the uh, start of the digital age and mini DV was really the very first mainstream digital uh, recording media for consumers around the world. So um, anyone who switched from an analog to digital camcorder would have started using this. So this format came out in the in 1995 to be precise. Um, and it was a collaboration between Panasonic and Sony. Now you will find tapes made by many other, uh, sorry, I should say tapes branded many other brands like TDK, uh, Verbatim, uh, and so on. But just note that they are all made by uh, Panasonic. Um, Sony tapes are only uh, sold by themselves, so you won't find a rebranded Sony tape. Now the difference being uh, Panasonic used a dry lubricant, which they claim is superior to Sony's wet lubricant. The thing you have to be aware of is there are reported incompatibility issues when people switch between Sony and other brand uh, tapes in their recording or playback equipment, um, which can lead to a reduced data rate and that in turn leads to artifacts on the screen, etc. Um, what Sony recommends is they say they couldn't reproduce the problem in the lab, but they recommend using a, a head cleaner to clean the uh, the head in your, uh, your, your device before switching uh, brands. Now, <clears throat> if you had um, a mini DV uh, tape with some video footage, the only way you, you could um, really play it back to show the footage to your friends or family was to hook your camcorder up to a uh, TV through um, composite video out. So uh, it was a bit inconvenient in that sense, but the size made the uh, camcorder so much more compact and, and portable and, and light. Um, so in terms of specifications, mini DV or, or rather DV format in general, recorded video at, uh, what was it? 720 by 480, which is also 480p, which is the identical resolution used by DVD. So you could say DVD quality uh, video. Um, it is a lossy compression. Audio, however, is recorded uncompressed at two channels, 48 kilohertz at, sorry, 40, that's it, yeah, 16 bit at 48 kilohertz. Um, or you could capture multi-channel, uh, four channel audio as well at um, 12 bits instead of 16. So 16 bits at 48 kilohertz, so that puts it slightly better than CD quality because CD only does 44.1. In terms of video, although it's a lossy compression, the, the, the bit rate is incredibly high. It's um, 25 megabits per second to be exact. So think about it, 25 megabits per second for a DVD quality video. Today, you could get a uh, 4K HDR stream um, at about 10 megabits per second to 15. So the main thing to keep in mind when it comes to uh, video encoding is is that the, the process of compressing or encoding 
videos is very computationally intensive so and that's why you find many handheld devices even the, the latest iphones and all that, that take quite a while to encode videos into high resolution formats and high frame rates um, sort of settings um, so back then this was in 1995 um, when this uh, this uh, format was released so you could imagine how weak the uh, CPUs were at the time. Uh, the other thing to note is um, in terms of solid state and optical storage um, back in the mid 90s they were pretty much uh, incapable of, of holding so much data so at 12 megabits per second if you um, multiply that by 60 minutes I've done the math it works out to be somewhere about a ballpark 11 gigabytes of data that one this uh, tape could could hold. Now, um, round about that time, uh, we 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 then got things like writable uh, CDs that could hold like six hundred megabytes of six hundred fifty to seven hundred megabytes of data, and also solid state uh, memory uh, at the time were were measured in sort of megabytes. So you could get like a maybe eight or thirty two megabytes flash drive. Um, I Omega did a zip drive that. Oh, 100 megabytes data upgraded to 250 megabytes of data so so there was nothing out there that could capture uh, this much data um, so if you can't make the processor more powerful to um, compress the video a bit tighter to get a smaller uh, file size then you have to increase the storage uh, capacity and that's basically um, why these tapes had to be used now the successor to mini dv is a uh, was basically optical uh, optical disc so camcorders then switch to writable dvds um, which is kind of convenient for from consumer point of view because it means you could take the dvd out of the camcorder and, and play it back in a standard dvd player or pop it into your computer to uh do some video editing and things like that right so <clears throat> i'm just going to quickly move on and i'm going to make another video about this but Oh, by the way, I just want to mention that later on, Sony also came up with uh, another format called Micro MV, which is a uh, much smaller, or, or I should say, uh, slightly smaller, but also thinner uh, format, and that made the uh, camcorders even lighter and even more uh, portable. Now, um, how do you get the video out from camcorders with mini DV? So, um, the only digital output you find in, in mini DV camcorders is something called Firewire 400. So that was the very first Firewire format and this is what the, the port looks like. So you had a, fire, these are all Firewire 400 ports, so that's a 4 pin one and those two are 6 pins and the only difference is that 6 pin ports supply power as well, whereas 4 pins just for data uh, transfer. And I'll, I'll be making a separate uh, video about this but the reason for that for that is if you take a bit of a, a, a rewind in the uh, uh, what do you call the interfaces that were available at the time so USB uh, 1.1 was only released in 1998 and USB 1.1 only handled 12 megabits per second whereas Firewire from the get-go when uh, these camcorders were out Firewire 400 could transfer 400 megabits per second so for a very long time firewire was the uh, the uh, dominant uh, protocol for high speed data transfers um, the other difference is that firewire sends data in a, in a stream rather than data packets like usb does so firewire then became very popular for for stream based applications like scanners and um, video transfers uh, firewire the other difference is firewire is half duplex so it can only send or receive uh, data but not uh, both at the same time so one thing i'll be doing another video on this and um, basically uh, just as a quick intro if you wanted to add firewire to a modern pc you, you have to get one of these cards and I'll, I'll be explaining why in in the other video yeah there's no way to do there's no quick way to convert or to add firewire support to modern pcs and laptops unfortunately uh right that's it for this video so um i'll be also also uh, making another video on the actual camcorder which is currently uh being 
uh, it's en route to, to my uh, location, but due to the uh, Christmas uh, traffic, um, you know, post and courier services are getting slightly delayed. But when that arrives, I'm going to be doing a demo on uh, recording and, and playback with one of these tapes. Um, and and yeah, in the in the uh, Firewire video, I'll also be explaining the uh, complicated process on, on how to actually install one of these and get the drivers on that. Because the other thing is that Windows 10 has dropped support for Firewire. So there's there's some workarounds that need to be done and all that. But anyway, that's it from, for now. Yep, thanks for watching.